This is Duke University. One of the sort of um, mental boxes that we're in in thinking about goodness is to say, to, try to tend to identify goodness with altruism and then see its opposite as egoism. But it seems to me that there are clearly forms of altruism or giving that can be destructive, both for the person who's doing the giving and for the person on the receiving end. And I uh, take this topic up through looking at a children's book, a very popular children's book by Shel Silverstein called The Giving Tree. It's about a tree who gives to a boy and in the end lets him take her whole trunk because she makes herself a stump. And in the book, they remain friends at the end. He all, he's an old man and all he needs is a stump so she can give him that as well. Um, I reacted very negatively to this book and I wanted to explore my own gut reaction. Why, do, why did this form of altruism seem so negative? We tend to take this idea about altruism that it's like philanthropy, that that's the only kind of giving. It's a zero-sum game. I have a certain pot of goods or a certain pot of money, whatever I give to you I take from myself. So that the measure of how good I am is how self-sacrificing I am. Um, and I think that really distorts our understanding of goodness because if you think about other ways of giving, like uh, between parents, parents towards their children or among friends, um, that doesn't necessarily involve that sense of self-sacrifice. It can involve a sense of fulfillment for the self at the same time. Instead of looking at altruism as a good thing in relation to how much sacrifice it requires, we might look at altruism and all other kinds of good actions in, with respect to human flourishing. Um, how does, if, if you think back to the boy and the tree, right? What I don't like about that story is that both the boy and the tree seem to be diminished by this relationship of giving. The boy doesn't learn reciprocity. He doesn't become more generous. He's a very selfish little kid. Um, so you could look at that and say, well, if altruism is what goodness is, it's not always good to be good. And then you ask yourself, well, how does that statement make sense? What do I mean by good the second time I use it? And I think what we mean is psychologically healthy, flourishing as a human being. If you think about altruism as good and egoism as its opposite, then egoism, selfishness seems like the worst possible thing, you know? And you know what? It's not the worst possible thing. One could say if, if goodness is doing good to others wish and willing to do good to, to others, uh, its opposite is willing to do harm to others. Its opposite is cruelty. And we don't think that much about cruelty when we talk about these things. We're all involved with selfishness. Um, and I think that you know, those kinds of things can lead people to say, oh, you know, maybe there are other ways to think about this than the way I'm used to thinking about it. Um, altruism, for example, I learned in doing this project, is a made up word. It was made up by Auguste Comte in France a couple centuries ago. Um, people didn't always think about it that way. They talked about beneficence and benevolence, or kindness and charity, which have really different connotations. So just knowing some of the history of thinking about these kinds of concepts that we use all the time in daily life um, can open up the possibilities for you a little bit, I think. You need to stop just taking for granted that the way we tend to talk about these things is the only way to talk about these things. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu. Thank you.